I'm turning your Bible to John chapter 1. I'm going to talk to you today about the fact that salvation is spiritual, not intellectual. There's a lot of people that make professions of salvation, and all it is is just their intellect. <clears throat> all I had to do was believe. All I had to do was have faith. Um, well, you can believe in Buddhism. You can have faith in Catholicism. You can believe or have faith in anything. Um, that doesn't save you. If there's no spiritual connection between you and God the Father through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if there's no spiritual transaction that happens there, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to be going to heaven when you die. Let me show you the proof. John chapter 1, verse 12 through 13. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We'll get back to that. We'll go through these verses in detail. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Wait, you say, wait a second here. This, is, this does not make any sense at all. Look at this. Verse 12. Even to them that believe on his name. See, it's right there. Just believe. But verse 13 goes on to say, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Well, how can you believe without it being your own will? You say, oh, Calvinism, Calvinism, it's the elect. It's um, 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 God's unconditional election and, and his uh, you know, irresistible grace. He pours his irres irresistible grace on you. He, one day you're just standing there and all of a sudden he's, this divine hand comes down and picks you up like this and says, you're going to get saved right now. Okay, all right, okay. Let me down, you know. Uh, no, that's not it. What's going on there? Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, as many as received him, have you received Jesus Christ? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. God is the one that saves, not us. Even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Well, then how does, where does your belief come from? Your belief, friend, comes from God's Holy Spirit convicting you of your sins and helping you to realize what this book says about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And then it's up to you at that point in time to believe. But if you don't come to that point of conviction of sin, of saying, I'm a sinner, why would you believe? I mean, would it be called a believing in vain? Yes, it would. I want to get saved. I, I need to be saved. I, want to, I believe Jesus died for me. For what reason? So that you can say, well, then I've, I put my faith in this thing and that Jesus did back on the cross. And now I can go on living just like the devil, living like the lost world. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. And then you can understand things. Then you can say, now I understand why he died on the cross. Now I understand that my self-righteousness is never going to get me in. And I believe my only chance at heaven is his death, burial, and resurrection. I believe by faith. But it doesn't come from up here. Let's continue. Romans chapter 5. I'll show you that it's from God. <clears throat> Salvation is not intellectual. And I'll tell you right now, the vast majority of people, salvation is only intellectual. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You don't play any part in it. You understand? All you do is just respond to the Holy Spirit of God coming upon you and saying, and I don't mean coming into you as in what happens when you get saved. The Holy Spirit will put conviction on you. Why do you think the lost world gets so offended at people like myself 
I'm driving around my vehicle and things and I have on the side of my vehicle on the back side it says uh, you know if you died tonight would you be in heaven or hell magnet on the side there and it says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and I have people that pass me and go flying and passing other people and things trying to get away from me on the back of the vehicle I have the fool hath said in his heart there is no God and I'll get people up behind me and all of a sudden they're way back or they'll try to get around me and think I've done that thing for years sort of a, a my own little version of street preaching people get offended why why it's just an intellectual thing that you just intellectually say, I believe, and so there, that's all. No, it's about sin. It's the Holy Spirit of God working through scriptures and working through you know things like the bumper magnets and whatever else or, or just witnessing to people, gospel tracts. You put a gospel tract down in a, in a public area that says something about sin on it, and it'll be like a rattlesnake. Try it. Try it. It's an experiment, you know, good scientific experiment for you. Try it. You put something out there about, are you a sinner? Put it on a public bench and then go someplace and just watch. And you'll see people and they'll, they'll, they'll do this thing where they'll walk past it and you see their eyes looking down at it like that. And they, they look back and, you know, whatever. You might get somebody that's brave and they'll come over and they'll, they'll look down at it or even touch it. and You know, I used to make fluorescent orange tracks, bright fluorescent orange tracks, you know. And as said something about, are you a sinner on the front, you know? And, and people just walk like, I don't even see it, you know? Why? Because God's Holy Spirit is there convicting them. They know they're a sinner. You know you're a sinner. Salvation is not some kind of just a little profession that people make. Um, you're not born again by, by the will of the flesh or by the mind up here, the will of the mind. It's God's Holy Spirit that comes and says, and convicts you and says, you're a sinner, you're going to hell, and you deserve it. What are you going to do about it? That's the truth of the matter. And that's why a lot of these lost people out there, they just, say, they just want to kind of fake their little Christian thing, and they want to go to their little church, and they want to do little good works and everything else. And nice people, very, very kind people communitarians and, and just loved by everybody and they're everybody's friend and, and uh-huh yeah and they're going to hell they're going to hell they want to form a form of christianity that there's no conviction of sin we want christianity but we want don't want the holy spirit of god coming in here and telling us what to do so we're just going to say we have professions and i believe i'm saved and i i've believed i believe in jesus and you know everything else mm -hmm, yeah and you get around some of them as a Bible-believing Christian, and they will hate your guts. And all you do is just try to talk about truth from the Scriptures. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 3. You know, you're so, you're so naive when you get saved, you know? I know we've all been through it if you're if you're born again you know what I'm talking about here but you get you're so naive you know and, and you come out and you get saved and you and you just want to tell people and you're so excited and you go up to your Christian relatives and you and you say guess what I just got saved and they and they say oh really well that's good and you say yeah and the Bible the, the Lord showed me that the King James Bible is God's perfect word and the other ones are from the Vatican can you believe that and all of a sudden you see the Oh, uh, well, I, you know, I'd be careful with some of that stuff, you know. And you say, oh, and i, I got to tell you something else here. Um, and, and you start to tell about truth. And all of a sudden, that uh, Christian relative starts to, you know, you're getting really radical. And, and, and they start to just yell at you. And they'll get mad, you know. And the naive new Christian is going, but the, um, uh, the, it, the Bible says it. The Lord just showed me. Aren't you excited? You know. And pretty soon you start to realize um, the vast majority of Christians are fake. You say, what would you say? I said, the vast majority of Christians are fake. The vast majority of uh, Christians are on their way to hell. They're going to burn forever. They develop their own little sect of Christianity. We believe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Continue. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? 
Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? The Lord gave to every man? The Holy Spirit of God will go in there and he'll convict people of their sin? Yes, he will. Verse 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. God gives the increase. You're not born again by your own, the will of the flesh, the will of the mind. It's God's Holy Spirit. It's a supernatural thing that happens. And when you get saved, there's a supernatural transaction that's made. The Bible says your life is not your own. You're bought with a price. You're a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Now, how's that for political correctness? All the great evils of slavery. Well, guess what? It's still going on. And I'm one of them. I'm a slave. Take my yoke upon you. He comes and he puts a yoke around my neck. Why? He bought me. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. My life isn't my own anymore. God has a right to tell me what to do and tell me what things need to change in my life. And if I don't, I get a beating. <gasps> you, you what? I get a beating. It's called chastening. He scourges. You get a whipping. Oh, it's just so horrible, isn't it? Well, that's New Testament Christianity. And if you find it repulsive, it's because you're lost. I mean, you know, it, it just it, it has always been so incredible to me how people can profess to be Christians and yet get offended when a preacher preaches against sin. All sin is negative. Why would you get offended at a preacher preaching against sin? Weird. Weird. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. Let's read that. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's all about the Lord, in other words. Okay, it's what we're reading. It's not, well, we did this and we did, you know, it's all about the Lord. He's the one that saves you. Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by faith are ye saved alone. Uh, and it is of yourselves, it's not the gift of God, um, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, let's go to the next passage. Uh, uh, no, actually, that's not what it said. You know, I made a video coming out a while back, and I said, no one was ever saved by faith alone. All right, and I said that not because I'm against faith for salvation. I'm not against faith. But faith is what man does. God's grace has to be there. You can't have salvation without God being part of it. God's part of the equation. It's not just, well, he did something in the past and I'll just believe that and I don't need to actually talk to him or, or get him involved in this transaction. I'm just going to go, oh yeah, that back there, yeah, that's me. Okay, I, I believe that. All right, let's, let me just go on with my life now. It doesn't work that way. You're not born again by the will of the flesh or by the will of the mind. Do you understand? Okay. And I made this video because I was attacking these people that come out and they just say it's just this profession of faith and that's all there is to it. And it's, you know, sola fide, sola fide, faith alone, faith alone, you know, and all this stuff. And I understand some of the people that were saying it, you know, back in the Reformation years, Protestant Reformation years, some of them were saying it as a way to go against Roman Catholic works with the sacraments and all the other satanic nonsense that the Catholic Church does with their cannibalistic uh, ceremony of the Eucharist. And so they were saying faith alone. Well, but you see, that's not what the Scripture teaches. You see, faith, think about the, the equation here. Verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith. You're saved by grace through faith. There's two words there, key words, class. Grace and faith. Do we have grace for God? No. Do we have faith in God? Yes. So what part do we play in that equation? Faith. What part does God play in that equation? Does God have faith in man? <laughs> I don't think so. God doesn't have faith in man. He knows what a failure man is. 
That's why he has to have grace. You understand? So when somebody says we're saved by faith alone, what are they doing? They're removing God out of the equation. And I can't take this finger down because then it would look pretty bad. Okay, it'd just be my middle finger. You have, I'll just do it this way. God's grace, man's faith. You say, I'm saved by faith alone. Okay, then what are you admitting to? Your salvation is intellectual. My faith, my belief. That's the problem here. That's what's going on. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. You say, uh, can, you, can you lose your salvation? Um, well, if it's your salvation, then you most definitely can. Uh, if it's God's salvation, if He saves you, how can you lose it? He's the one that holds on to it. He's got the title deed. He's got the, the key to the lock that, of the yoke around your neck. He owns you. Okay? <laughs> You're not going to lose it because you can't. He's holding on to it. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Renewing of the Holy Ghost? What does that mean? Well, um, as a young child, you're going to have that innocence there. You're not really going to understand what sin is. Uh, that's why it cracks me up these false converts all the time. You know, I got saved when I was two years old. You didn't get anything of the kind, okay? Uh, salvation is not going to come to you as a young child. All right, not at all. You're going to have to be older and understand what it means to sin before a holy, righteous God. Oh, but I prayed the prayer. Yeah, yeah, it's called you believed or had faith in something that was just your own will, the will of the flesh and the will of the mind. Uh, what goes on there at salvation is the Lord is the one that is going to convict you. Again, it's not your own will. It's not the will of man. So then where does it come from? The Holy Spirit of God comes and convicts you of that sin. And what happens? Renewing of the Holy Ghost. You were innocent without the law. You didn't understand the laws of God. But when sin came, you revive and you die. All right, you see? In other words, you are, you're alive there as, you know, sinless in God's sight. And then you get older and all of a sudden you sear that conscience for the first time. You know you shouldn't steal and yet you did. You know you shouldn't lie. You know you shouldn't lust. You know you shouldn't swear. You know you shouldn't whatever. And you do it of your own free will. And all of a sudden, that conscience gets a little bit blackened. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And you keep messing up and messing up and messing up and messing up until finally the Lord brings you in contact with something. Be it a gospel tract, be it a, a magnet on somebody's vehicle, be it a street preacher out someplace, somebody walks up to you and witnesses to you. You actually have a born-again relative or co-worker or something like that. Whatever it is, the Holy Ghost brings that conviction into your life and says, you're a sinner. What are you going to do about it? And you say, I am a sinner. I need to be saved. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on, my, on the cross to pay for my sins, but boy, I don't even know if I'm worth it, Lord. If you want to buy me, you're going to get a bum deal, but, but please, please, and, and it's all you're going to think about. I'll tell you right now, I've heard the testimony of many, many people, and they get to a point where it's just, I don't even care about my job, I don't care about my friends, I don't care about my family. And quite often, the Lord will lead them in a new direction after they get saved, and it'll lead, lead them into a divorce. Their marriage will bust up. They'll lose their job. Family will turn against them. I've seen all kinds of things just, their life just, just crashes after they get truly born again because the people see Hey, they're saved now, and there's something about you that I don't want to be around. There's something about you. You've changed. You're not the same person I once knew. You're not the fun person I used to be around. You, you're weird now. I don't, I don't want to be around you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you're truly born again, when you've come to the end of yourself, the renewing of the Holy Ghost happens. And now you start to see things like a child that says, 
But my father says I'm not supposed to do that. My father's convicting me right now. I'm part of a different family. They say, if you continue in these beliefs of yours, you're not welcome to come around here to these family gatherings anymore. We don't want you around here anymore. You're judging us every single time that you come here. You're making problems. You're doing this. And you're saying, I just want to tell people the truth. Yes, yeah, you know, and, and, and things. The renewing of the Holy Ghost comes in and you say, you know what? It, great, it grieves me that my family is treating me this way, but uh, I have a new family now. I have a new father now. You don't want to be around me? Okay. But I've been adopted spiritually. Goodbye. We all have family members that we haven't talked to in years. And it only gets worse with time. Friends, co-workers, whatever else that have turned against us as born-again Christians. But all the modern Christians, oh, they're just loved by everyone. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. because they're false. They're false. So I, I just don't know if I'd want that. I mean, if real true Christianity is about people turning against me and me becoming unpopular, I don't think I'd want that. Yeah, well, I can see why you wouldn't because Jesus, he wasn't at all unpopular and, and he was loved by everyone. If the world hates you, it hated Jesus before it hated you. You're going to follow Jesus, but you're going to get along with the world? Right, right. Uh, Jesus was a perfect man. He did have sinless perfection. We can't. He had sinless perfection. And yet, they hated him. And uh, actually, the reality of it is, they hated him because of his sinless perfection. Everywhere he went, he didn't have to say anything. People being convicted, they're coming up and, you know, Oh, you know, the devil possessed people and things are coming up and saying, why are you here to torment us and things, you know, before the time. And Jesus just standing there. He's going, what, you know? And how many times do you get that as a Christian? You come walking in someplace and all of a sudden the people start getting uncomfortable and whatever else. Yeah, because you're part of the body of Christ. God saves you. It's not your decision that you've made and it's all about you. It's not intellectual. It's spiritual. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 through 25. We'll finish here. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Are you corruptible? Yes. Is your seed corruptible? Yes. We are genetic copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. We've lost... I believe genetic material like crazy. I mean, we're, I think we're really ignorant compared to the way they would have been thousands of years ago. Um, I mean, we're not even going to get into the air pollution and the EMF fields and the, all the other stuff like that that just makes us very, very sickly people. Uh, we're not that intelligent, okay? Uh, I, I could go off on a big rabbit trail there, but I'm not going to. Um, but it doesn't take much uh, understanding to realize that, yes, we are corruptible seed but all you got to do is believe believe just be, just just your belief if you believe you're in you can just go i'm saved <laughs> okay you're saved why i just believed i don't have to talk to god i don't have to ask god or anything else you know i don't have to wait and see you know what's the lord going to change in my life whatever else is there any signs of me actually being genuinely converted i don't need it I just believed. There you go. You know, faith alone, faith alone. Not of corruptible seed. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the mind. But of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Do you have a Bible that's perfect? Do you have the word of God in your hands? You say, well, all we have is translations of translations. Okay, then you can't be saved. 
what did you say? I said, you can't be saved. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Are you born again? What's your standard? How can you say that? Can you relate to this book? So I'm a born again Christian. Okay, can you relate here? Do you share some experiences with the Apostle Paul, and Peter, and James, and John, and the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you hated of all men for the name of Jesus? Or do you get along with people? Because all you have to do is just have belief. Isn't that so, it's, I mean, isn't that so nice? You go out there onto the streets and you say, we're going to go soul winning. And you go out there and you say, would you like to go to heaven when you die? Well, the Bible says here that all have sinned. Okay, we can all agree to that, can't we? And so all you got to do is just believe in Jesus and just pray this prayer with me. Would you like to pray this prayer with me? Sure, of course you would. And you lead him to the prayer. You say, friend, if you've prayed that prayer for the very first time and you truly meant it in your heart, I can tell you today that you're going to go to heaven when you die. You know, it's, thousands led to the Lord. Yeah, thousands led to the devil. Thousands led to hell. There's no new birth there. There isn't anything. It's the will of the flesh, you see. Corruptible seed. All you have to do is believe. How's God get into that equation? Well, just some kind of a past event. Uh, just like Islam. Muhammad was a past event. Buddha was a past event. Any religion, past event. How about today? Can you meet God today? Can you have a supernatural change in your life right now? Get in contact with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not a historical figure to those of us that are born again. We serve a risen Savior. I speak to Him on a daily basis, and He tells me what to preach from His Word. I have a personal relationship with Him, and it's supernatural. And I've seen times when I'm going to do some kind of a thing, I got my mind made up, this is the way I should go, and the Lord just goes, nope. And He slams the door shut. And he yanks me away from that thing. And I, I'm going, Lord, I don't know why. What? I thought that that was what you wanted me to do. And the Lord's just, wait. Wait, child. Wait. A little while later, he says, okay, now, there, go do that. Oh, okay. Oh, oh all right, now it makes sense. And, you know, <laughs> Supernatural change. You say, I, this is heresy. This is heresy. Oh, it's just belief. It's just belief. Um, well, that's kind of funny because you see, back when I was an eight-year-old boy in Sunday school, I had just belief. I prayed the little prayer, the little funny prayer, and there was nothing supernatural that happened. Not one thing. See, I've, I've actually done this, uh, whatever you want to call it, free grace, easy believism, quick prayerism, whatever you want to call the thing. I did that. And I lived that way from the time I was eight up until the time I was 26 years old. Almost 20 years of life like that. Uh, you know, almost the, the time I've been saved from now till, the, till now, or from back 26 to, till now that I'm 43. Uh, you know, lived most of my life as a lost man, a professing Christian. People come along and they say, oh, oh no, you were saved, but now you've lost your salvation because you're preaching works salvation or some kind of stupid nonsense. Please, I don't think so. Um, you need to make sure of your salvation. You need to make sure that it's not the will of the mind or the will of the flesh, not of corruptible seed. You need to make sure that you haven't been led astray by some false prophet like Jack Hiles or one of these other guys, these Baptists out there that there's no repentance, there's no changed life, there's no turning from sin, none of that stuff. They can't promise you a changed life. They can't promise you any kind of victory over sin. You're not even supposed to have that stuff. That's a lordship salvation, they say. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this ministry exists to preach the truth of God's word. And um, I'd be a lot more popular if I said all you got to do is just uh, believe. It's faith alone. That's all it is. Just pray this simple prayer and you're in, friend. Now send your donations. Um, I tick off a lot of people because I preach hard against sin. And I don't compromise. And so a lot of people get angry about that. And I've had a lot of people that uh, they're little believers. They have their little faith alone thing. And they kind of hang around, 
you know, Brother Brian's ministry and King James Radio Ministries, and we're blessed by some of these really neat sermons that he puts out, and all of a sudden I say, boom, against some kind of a sin, and they, well, how dare you? And, and then they go off, and then they're stabbing me in the back and whatever else. Why? Because they're false. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Do you love the law of God? Do you love to look at His Word and see a time when it says, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, and it condemns sin, and the Lord convicts you? Renewing of the Holy Ghost in your life, and you say, oh, ooh, yeah, you, you, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that, Lord. Oh, please help me to get rid of that thing. Not sinless perfection, you see, but a sinner saved by God's grace, and God will have grace for you. There are still sins today, okay? Just recent types of things here. After all the years that I've been saved since I was 26 years old, all these years later, and the Lord just waits for the right time to convict me of a sin and say, Son, that thing needs to go out of your life. Well, Lord, I'm sorry. I've been doing that all these years. I, didn't, I, I, I never saw that in the Scriptures before. I didn't understand it. And Lord, yeah, okay, but get it out of your life right now. It's, it's, it's hurting your walk with me. The Lord is going to be gracious as a loving Father. You're his bondservant. He owns you, bought you with a price. But he's going to be gracious. And he will wait for the right time to start convicting you of sin. And he'll say, son, daughter, stop. That needs to go. And he'll give you victory over that sin. But if you don't want that, well, then just go on and believe and say, oh, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I believe the gospel. And I believe this. And I don't need to change life. I don't want supernatural um, anything supernatural in my life. I just want dead religion. So I can go to my little uh, church building, my little social club, and we can talk about Donald Trump and the weather and sports. Mm -hmm. Not for me. Get it sorted out. Okay? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.